Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker, and I grew up watching both As the World Turns and Guiding Light. While I was home in quarantine, I was thinking about the shows I grew up watching and thought, uh, and I was missing the shows I grew up watching, like my favorite, As the World Turns, and thought some of you may be feeling the same way, too. Yesterday was 10 years um, since As the World Turns went off the air, and today my guest stirred up a lot of trouble in Oakdale in the late 80s, and I personally was glued to my TV. So I'm thrilled that they're all here with me today. Please welcome to the locker room, Andrew Kavavit, who played Paul Stenbeck, Melanie Smith, who played Emily Stewart, and Ming-Na Wen, who played Leanne Hughes. Say hello to everybody. Melanie, Andy, and Hey, everyone. Hi. I'm 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 doing a live stream oh, for you too, just for my fans. <laughs> that's awesome. Right. Um, so when was the last time you all saw each other? When we were babies. <laughs> <laughs> Decades for sure. Yeah, and no Andy, doubt about definitely it. a baby. How old were you when you started? Uh, I think I was twelve when I started on that show. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And, oh, yeah. That's Crazy. Yeah. It well, was better, I, than, uh, better than school. Wow. <laughs> uh, especially and, what we were talking about backstage, but I'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> and, then, and then there's that, yes. <laughs> but, um, I, you know. I, I was the work. best teacher. You were the best teacher, exactly. <laughs> I got, what kind I of got teacher? To, <laughs> that kind of, te that kind of uh, teacher. Wait, wait, wait. Sure. How old were you, Andy? I got when so I when I'm when I started on the show, uh, I was probably you know fifteen or sixteen at that point. I think. So I was basically a, like a cougar. <laughs> I mean, I was not, a cougar. Yes, you yeah. were a cougar on on the show, but I was playing a sixteen year old, and I wasn't. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. I, were you? It's, cra what, you it's were crazy. Oh. I was twenty. Two, I think. But I mean, you played six. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And Ming, <laughs> Ming, was that one of your first roles? Yes. Out out of uh, college. Yeah, I was just doing theater. And it was one of my first, like, real training into camera work because we never did that at Carnegie Mellon. Oh, because, nice. You went to Carnegie Mellon. That's amazing. Yeah, I'll just do a little drop there for my al alum. <laughs> I love it. And... Um, can you all talk about, you know, what you remember about auditioning, a screen test, your first day? Ming, if you want to go. Um, I remember I was um, auditioning and uh, Phyllis, I think, was a uh, part of it uh, for sure. And, and then um, I just remember thinking, wow, I have to play a young person. I don't know if I'm going to get this part. And then <laughs> I was in another room and the vents, you can actually hear the audition going on of the other actors that were um, doing it. And then I was listening in on them and I was like, oh, I think I have a good chance. <laughs> so you knew. Yeah, I, mean, oh, did you I, have, I was still really shocked when I got. The were part. you um, screen testing or auditioning with with one of the actors on the show? Do you remember? No, I didn't audition with uh, Andy or Scott. I think right. Is, I don't I, believe we did. No, no, not for your not for your screen test or any of that. No, uh, uh. I just uh, I I think I was just doing it with a reader. Oh, okay. And Melanie, do you remember? Like it was yesterday. I, wow. <laughs> it was yesterday. You know, I remember even the first, I I, I had kind of a, a different history coming into the industry, but I had a meeting with Vince and I was actually reading for Robin Morris's role. Was that Pam? Yeah. The character. Yeah, Pam? I think it was Pam. Yeah. Oh, wow. Completely different characters. Completely different. And Vince was like, thank you very much. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> and I just like scooting down the hall and he screams, Melanie, Melanie, come back here. And he calls me back and he says, I want you to come in and read for a character named Emily. So I read the scene and then he brought me right into Laurie's office, Laurie Queso. And I read and I left. And then my agents called me and they were like, they want to screen test you. 
And I was like, for what? <laughs> like, I literally was like, no. And so the day of my screen test, I'd gotten the scenes, you know, a week before, whatever. And it was, took place in a horse stable. And I actually went and took horseback riding lessons at in Central Park. And this actress from Guiding Light was there. And she came up to me and she's like, you should be on a soap opera. And I said, I have a screen test. And she said, <laughs> oh, you're going to get it. Wow. And I went into the audition. I walk in and there's two other girls from California, I think. They, flow, they, they had flown them in. And they were in like t-shirts and like ripped jeans and they looked so cool. And I was in full English writing gear. <laughs> you got all decked out. The, the, um, the stage, something had happened with the air conditioning so they couldn't have the screen test on the stage. So I had to do my screen test live in front of all the CBS executives. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I That's not intimidating. To, it was intimidating. Remember that conference room to the side of the entrance desk in the offices? Do you remember that, Andy? Like you walk in and- I do, yeah. Yeah, and so it was in there and there were like maybe 20 executives, if they were just back on the back wall. And I said, I really can't work like this. <laughs> I need the table to be moved back. And they all stood up and they moved the table for me. And then I did the scene with John and I left and I thought I had to have blown that. And I, I I found out I got it. That's amazing. Yeah, it was Andy, what, crazy. What do you remember? Andy, what do you remember about screen testing or your first day? Did you freeze? He might have froze. He did. He a really cool summer. <laughs> I was like, what happened to him? <laughs> <laughs> he looked like James Bond. Is everybody uh, on the East Coast or well oh, yes. we for Andy to reboot? Yeah. Yes. Oh there you there, are. There we go. Yay. There we go. Back. There, there we go. Back. No worries. Internet. So I was ask, asking about your uh, screen test or your first day, what you remember. Nope, he froze again. Oh, that's Ming, Ming, so you, Ming, your first day, you actually knocked on Tom's door, right? Right. Right. What, what what do you remember? Because I, I think he told a very funny story, if I'm not mistaken. If, I don't know if you remember it. I, I won't remember it exactly. He did. He You know, he knew how nervous I was, and he wanted to um, make me feel more comfortable. And, uh, and you know, and now nowadays, everybody has to try to be so PC. So right. I'm not going to tell this story. Uh, okay. But, you don't have to. I just you worry that. I mean, he was joking and I took it in the fun nature that it was because he knew I was a restaurant daughter. And oh, okay. he I didn't even know that. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, we've been talking about that and stuff. But now I feel like I can't tell that story because I don't right. want to make it seem like, you know, he was, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to. So, yeah. But, totally. But, but, but you know what, Scott? I'll everybody just say, knows. Scott. Yeah. I'll Scott just has say, a heart. Scott, Scott is the biggest, biggest yeah. hearted, wonderful human being. And um, so he did everything he could to make me feel at home. And he told a couple of great jokes when I opened the door. And I'll just leave it at that. And it completely put me at ease. And we were able to have a great day doing that scene. Well, that's, that's what you need, really. You know, you need that, you know, especially, you know, like you said, it was your first on camera work. It must have been a really nice thing to have that break the ice you know a little yeah. a little humor always goes a long yeah. way Absolutely. melanie what was your first day do you remember yeah i do um i was horrible uh <laughs> you didn't have scott you didn't have scott to like break the tension. <laughs> I, I was the worst actress that ever walked on to as the world turns i was horrible and i i i had knocked on the snyder farm door and I knocked on a door too. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, knock, knock, let me into the soap. Um, and <laughs> my first line was, my, my name is Emily Stewart. I'm in big trouble. Is my sister Betsy here or something like that? And I knocked on the door and I think it was, it might, <laughs> I don't know if it was Scotty or it might've been Billy Fickner. They opened the door. Oh, no. Who I love Billy. I just saw Billy quickly in New York on the street. Um, and they opened the door and I said, 
almost exactly like this. Hi, I'm Emily Stewart. I'm in big trouble. And my sister is Betsy Stewart. Is she here? <laughs> I don't think I gave anything more than that. And we did the scene. And then Paul Lammers came up to me and he said, um, darling, could you be a little nervous? <laughs> I think what he was trying to say to me was, can you look alive? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I was I wasn't nervous, but I didn't understand yet. And after that day, I went home. I watched that scene, and uh, I worked really hard, really hard to understand the craft of daytime. And it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just remember I had the worst bowl cut. I, I had these heavy, heavy bangs, which only made my you know at that time I had a lot of baby fat. It just made my face look like. The bangs were in. Bangs were in back there. I mean, back back then. Oh, and yeah. the inside. <laughs> I got it too far from the internet. Yeah, that there you go. So, do you remember your audition and screen test or first day? You know, I I I, I remember more of the experience in that it was my first uh, audition to act as an actor. Everything else prior to that had always been commercials. So. Um, for me, it was the first time playing a character with lines and all that. Um, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, probably all the way through the first couple of years, and, and arguably <laughs> maybe more. Um, but Which no, one? yeah. Well, I, I was twelve. The whole goal was for um, you know me to. Uh, well, when I started auditioning for commercials first, it took me like seventy something commercials to get a job, and with five wow. brothers. I, five siblings in my family, it was, you got to kind of keep pursuing it and succeed or you've kind of lost. So um, at least for my first acting job, I can say I booked my first one, which was As the World Turns. Wow. Oh, that's, that's, that's amazing. Well, I, I have to say, you know, I was thinking about you, Andy, because I, I definitely got to work with Anthony Herrera. And, you know, as, as the PR guy on the show, I, I was nervous around James Stenbeck. <laughs> and I can't imagine being 12, you know, and walking in and, and you know, he's your dad. Um, <laughs> you know, what? because he, he's a character, he's larger than life. What, what, what was it, what do you remember about Anthony? Um, advice that I cannot repeat. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few things. <laughs> that I remember vividly that he told me that uh, I, I've shared I've shared only with very few people. Um, you know, honestly, I think Anthony, amongst many people, had a great influence on like how I grew up. This was my school. This was like when I was 12 years old till I was 17, 18 years old was uh, kind of where I went every day. You know, at least four days a week or so. Um, so they all kind of took me under their wing and I, and I, I, I appreciated it and I respected uh, every single day that I got to do it. Yeah. And, and Melanie Marie masters as your mom. Yeah. And, and you just told me, uh, so the fans know you got to see her just before COVID happened. Yeah. Um, she's just, I love Marie. You know, we were really, really close. We were together all the time and I was very close to her children too. Uh -huh. Um, but she, I think when you come into a situation like daytime, it's very, very different than any other medium because you are there. If you have a main storyline, you are there every day. Um, and, and you rely on each other. You know, um, I was very, very new to any, you know, I'd never even thought of being an actor. So it was, it was a really different world for me. And, and Marie helped me understand a lot, but she was also just, truly a friend to me and and I to her, you know. So it, it was great working with Marie. She's so talented and, and we had so much fun together. Yeah, she's you know, wonderful. Yeah. So much fun together. And we had so many rich, sorrow filled scenes. And I really got to understand what it meant to act. And she really helped me with that and helped me work hard on that stuff. Um, she was a blessing. You know, she was a blessing. And, and I was I was also blessed to have a friend in her. You know, it was a mentor, but it was also a real friendship. How long, yeah, for all how long were you guys on the show? I was on- I was sorry, just Alan, about seven or eight no, years. Okay. Go right ahead. Go ahead. Seven or eight years for me, somewhere in that range. Uh-huh. I was on 
for I think it was three and a half years, and then my my mom was dying, and I left. Oh, uh-huh. And then Douglas called me and said, you know, we want you to come back. Can you come back? And I said, I don't think I I, I was working in LA at that point, and I said I can't come back. I I have commitments, and he said, well, will you come back for another however many month arc? And I said that I would do, and so I went back. So I would say from beginning till absolute end was about five years. Okay. Four. And Ming, you were three, right, Ming? Two or three? Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and I remember um, wondering when my contract was coming up, like what to do, what not to do, or, you know, stay on, don't stay on. And Scott was the one that said, um, you know what, you're young. And I've done everything I needed to do in my life. And so this is like the long, long game for me. But for you, you need to go out there and sow your oats and- Oh, I, you're making the hair on my, you know, And wow. you know, he really, I mean, he really like pushed me to, you know, gave me the confidence to just quit a cushy, you know, job really, and just go, okay, I'm gonna go and go out there and stop kissing little boys. No. <laughs> <laughs> But but at least oh Scott God. and I Scott Scott and I taught her patience at least. She was very, very patient with us young boys. I, no, you guys were you guys were real okay. My brother just gave me a bunch of boxes that he found in the basement of our restaurant. He was cleaning up the restaurant. And you would not believe those boxes contained a bunch of soap opera digest. Oh boy. And clippings and I was like, this is just meant to be. So I oh, have boy. <laughs> there it is. I love it. That's great. And Melanie, look. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> there it is. how amazing is that? That's, That's awesome. <laughs> I love that your brother just gave that to you. But no, uh, I was me. so surprised. Look at that. Oh, that so is awesome. Oh, look at those bags. Okay. You really did Scott Holmes proud. I mean, I love that you, you know, he, he gave you that kick and, you know, look at the wonderful success. It's really, it's nice when you can come into a place, no matter what kind of job, whether it's acting or just, you know, an office and somebody who you work with gives you that confidence, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Just guidance and, you know, good, you good know, um, yeah. You have to write me now back then it wasn't a real it wasn't an easy jump so there was sort of a feeling if you stayed too long you couldn't make the jump back then mm -hmm. and so everybody sort of encouraged everybody just do your three and a half years or your three years and make the jump or you'll never make the jump mm -hmm. yeah and, you know that it's not yes, that you made us all look good yeah, she made us all look at. I think we rooted for other soap opera actors, you know, to be able to go ahead and break right. through the other the other right. ceilings that were, uh, for some reason, kind of shut off. Yeah. Well, I well, never I never thought of the business that way, you know, because I was still so young and new to it, and I was still in my head like thinking I was a theater girl, and so it was it was all new, you know, everything from having an agent or a publicist or all of that that it was just such a whirlwind of of learning and um figuring out what show business really was and i mean as the world turns couldn't have given me my education after my my education on all of that you know for all three of you what what do you think are some of the biggest lessons that you learned working in oakdale <laughs> Oakdale. <laughs> For me. You probably you probably hadn't heard that in a while, huh? No, no, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, we're me, all from Oakdale. <laughs> we're all from, where'd you grow up? My my, my ex-girlfriend. My ex-girlfriend <laughs> from, from Oakdale. Well that's that's what Andy emailed me. He said it will be so good to see my girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favorite, Andy? <laughs> he, he's not kissing and telling. Ah, uh, you know, as, as you both know, I am a uh, lover of women, so I, I enjoyed all of my storylines. Well, Ming, now I trained him for you. It's just <laughs> all right. I trained. That him. Made, that, well, that's you, probably true. 
Um, <laughs> it's definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> were, you shocked, were you shocked when you had to have that storyline? Did what? When, were you like surprised? Near her. Were you shocked? When oh, well, we were just saying, you know, we we were thought it was fantastic. Um, Patricia Bruder, <laughs> my grandmother was like, I can't believe they're doing this. What is this? This is criminal. Um, and Ellen, Ellen Stewart. Well, and it's interesting because one of our fans had written into me saying, how do you feel? Do you think with today's sort of me too and all of that, how do you think that story would be, you know, would they be able to get away with it? There are a lot of things I think would have been questionable today, even though it wasn't nearly as risque as some of the things that are not questionable today, right? right. Um, I, I mean, there was not even a name for that then. You know, now I'm a cougar, but um, back then there was no name for it. It was just enormously inappropriate. I was a predator, I guess. But um, I think the beauty of our storyline was the vulnerability of both of them. Even though Emily was the bad girl or the, you know, the black sheep of the main family, um, I always played her as a broken person that really just wanted love. Um, and so the tenderness between myself and Andy on the show, I think gave a lot of forgiveness to what the underpinnings were that today, yeah, I think today there would probably, well, you know. It, he it, was legal, yes. right, at that point? He was of legal age. He was legal, he was 16. Oh, oh really? He was only 16 when that happened? 16, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Scandal. That's not legal. Yeah. I think it is legal, actually. Maybe in Oakdale. <laughs> in Oakdale That's exactly. legal. I happen to have the Oakdale Book of Law right here. <laughs> it's only legal if you follow up by murdering your dad. Your dad, that your makes dad exactly. Right. Which, you, which you did. That's no. Then it's no problem. It's all forgiven. <laughs> I mean, we really did have some bold storylines. Wow, yeah, I didn't realize that. Interesting. Huh. We did my first my first TV kiss. First TV kiss. Yep, which, uh, yeah, first love scene, for sure. First sex. Uh, which, by the way, that's that's the, the one of the more memorable days on the set. You probably, <laughs> you don't probably recall the destruction you caused in my 16 year old. Well, not real to show. Tell me, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> uh, so first kiss in the love scene, and uh, I hadn't even really noticed, but a good majority of the crew had gathered around because I had kind of grown up there. They thought this was a funny thing to watch. <laughs> um, and during the first take, you stopped the kiss and said, have you been licking a skunk's a-hole? <laughs> he said that? You had it set up. Make that up. Uh, it <laughs> was quite that a whole nice breaker. Head. Oh no, no, it definitely not made up. But it was hysterical. Everybody really laughed. Uh, it broke the ice. It embarrassed the hell out of me, and uh, I'll, I'll remember forever. <laughs> and I bet I'll you were. Back. I I bet you were a few shades of red. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Yeah, and I start very kind of pale to begin with. Oh so my it God. was definitely it was a big color change. Yeah, All my heard. friends watching right now are going, that's something Melanie would say. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, it goes back to the point that we really were family and we really were friend, fr we had real true friendships on the set. And that's what friends do to each other. If you can't, um, you know, break each other's, um, you know, balls a little bit, then you're not really a, probably a true friend. And laughter on that set, making um, each other laugh was it's one of the reasons to go to work. Yeah. You know, it really, yeah. I remember Scotty Bryce used to make me laugh all the time. Oh, uh, that's the yeah. funniest. Everybody loves Scott. Um, but sometimes Scott would do stuff. He'd be, you know, in a scene and then he'd look right into camera and talk to the controller and go like, how's your day going? You know, like he, and you hear them laughing, you know, like he just got everybody going, but it's true. Andy, you know, yeah. being able to break the ice for a scene like that, you know, and to be able to, even though it sounds, you know, 
rather abrasive, but being able to <laughs> <laughs> Today it does. Back then it was very mild. Making the room laugh and bringing everybody into the experience with you. Because those scenes can be, you know, a little uncomfortable and trying to get it right. And people think they're sexy in this, but you're, they're oh, like, no. you're in your light and Andy, move your nose to the left and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, yes. Yeah. Oh, and, well, uh, you know, and, I yeah, remember you bringing Scotty uh, Bryce. I remember that he had this one scene where it was a slow, close, like slow moving close up to his face where he's just like sort of looking off camera, thinking about something. I don't remember what the scene was, but I remember watching that and I was so mesmerized by his like focus and, and, and like you could tell that he was just like there was things going on, you know, and his, and so I went up to his Scotty and I was like, so Scotty, what are you doing? I mean, there was so much going on in your eyes, you know? How you know, how do you bring that to the eyes? And he said, just think about anything. I was thinking about my grocery, what I was gonna have for lunch, what I was well, well, you know the restaurant scenes? You know the restaurant scenes, right? And I had my first restaurant scene and I, I was with Scotty, I think, one of my first ones, and it was Scotty, and I said, God, you know, I never know what to do when we're in the background, and he goes, just look at me and say peas and carrots, peas and carrots. Right. Yeah. yeah. Peas and carrots. Peas and carrots. That's it's, all. That's, that's the norm, right? But he he had such simple. Peas and carrots. I love that. <laughs> so so that. when he runs, we're in the background and we're all going peas and carrots. Uh, peas and carrots. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Hey, Andy, did you and Scotty hit it off immediately? Uh, Scott Scotty the greatest for sure. Yeah. Uh, it, absolutely. In every way, uh, we became best friends uh, through that uh, on the show and off. Um, so no, no doubt about it. And you, you're still friends, right, to this day? Oh, I'd like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Ming, what was it like? I mean, the, the two of them must have been, you know, two young kids on the set and you, you know, coming between there, you know, fighting over you. Yeah. Yeah. Um... It you know it, it's odd because uh, I had my personal life and then I had to go into this world where I had to play uh, the teenager. But I mean the two of them were great. We you know I mean we got along great. We would like just goof around. They would pick on me. They didn't care how old I was. They were like so mature already. You know having grown up on on uh, on the show. Um, so because like at that time I think I was like dating this like 33 year old guy. So it was, it was just weird how, you know, just going to parallel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Scott had been there at the show for quite a few years before I even got there. So, oh, he, really? you know, yeah, exactly. he really, yeah, he was able to kind of take me under his, um, take me under his wing. Yeah. No, they, they, they were great though. They really were. We, we had a lot of fun. So, and then Melanie, you as well with Anthony Herrera. What was that like for you? <laughs> I don't know if like I killed him. I killed him twice. You remember, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The man that would never. My guy. Yeah. Like, he was such an. And he died many years after you left too. <laughs> <laughs> he probably died. He kept coming. He there. kept coming back from the dead for sure. But I shot him. Right when I first came on the show, I shot him. And then <laughs> I never forget we did this one scene. Um, and Anthony, do you remember Anthony would forget his lines a lot? <laughs> Make stuff up. Just <laughs> <laughs> fly out of his head. And one one time we were doing this scene and he was creeping in my bedroom window. I was at my vanity or something. He was creeping in my bedroom window. And we had to keep taking takes because Anthony had forgotten his lines and then he would fall through the window and it was this big, was like a, and so and see, they were getting him ready again. Um, I think it may have been Bob that was directing that episode. They had me put on a Zorro mask, you know, and I turned around and I was like, Zorro, you've come to rescue me. So we used to have a lot of fun together. Anthony was a very serious actor. You know, he really took it seriously. And he was a lot of fun to work with. And he really, he, again, he helped me grow up and really understand what the medium was. That's was awesome. Great. Yeah, he was great. And, and Ming, did you feel um, 
in importance, you know, because I don't think there were a lot of Asians on daytime soap operas in the late 80s when you joined. Did you I, feel you were... I think I was one of know, the first, if not the first, yeah. contracted Asian actor. And yeah, no, I didn't I didn't feel... Um, but did you feel a responsibility? At all on the show. <laughs> did you feel a responsibility? I mean, there, were, there were like no, you know, there were very few diversity um, at, at that time. And so right. me coming on the show... Um, I mean, the only way that I could equate it is because I grew up in a very white neighborhood, you know, of Mount Lebanon um, in Pennsylvania. And so it felt very normal to me. It didn't feel um, strange. It's only looking back on it that I realized the importance of having, you know, been there to represent in, in the world of soap opera. Um, and, and yet at the same time, playing someone that didn't fall into a lot of the stereotypes, even though she was this orphan from, you know, Vietnam um, coming to look for her father. In the end, it was just about this young girl trying to fit in, trying to, you know, discover her new family. And, um, you know, it, I, I liked how, as the world turns, handled her character um, in a way that just made it more the norm as opposed to mm -hmm. a stereotype or trying to fit a particular story. Um, well, it also fit the norm because they also put you into, you know, the Hughes family, you know, they, they put you into, yeah. Tom, you know, Tom, made you Tom Hughes's daughter, which made you just, yeah, part of the, you have to made be you part, part of the family. family. When like, you have yeah. Fulton, you know, as your, <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> She was, what do you remember about Eileen? She was extraordinary, you know. She was one of those um, people that was, again, bigger than life and, and had her own world and her, you know, it, she's just, she she would do these uh, cabarets yeah. back in the day. We would go and, and listen to her do her cabaret act. And, you know, it's, she was lovely. Yes. Just sort of one of those old, you know, the older starlet Hollywood yeah. feel. Yeah, so, I don't so think beautiful. I can relate that. Totally, a true, a true diva. You know, she really uh, fit Lisa but in a great way. You know, yeah, what I, not, not a diva in a negative, right? I'm no, really... no, just in that grand. It's a grand yeah. dog. Grand, yeah, you know, all her gestures, everything was grand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was fabulous. And, and Melanie, one of your biggest rivalries was, was with uh, Andy's mother, Colleen Zank. <laughs> I you, told you, you I got slapped by everybody, but no one more than <laughs> Colleen Zank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Colleen, God, what a beautiful the, fan, the fans just adored those scenes. Well, they were fierce, those scenes. You know, we really went head to head. Um, and they, first of all, they were well written, uh, tons of fun to play, um, super drama, and uh, <laughs> I, they did a slap reel for me as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was like, I love that. And then this and then this and then this and then this, and it was like I remember when I had to do a scene with uh, the woman. She wasn't on long. She played Anthony Herrera's mother. And I can't remember who that was, but she was a very, uh, like she started, she had something like a hundred and some films under her belt, belt. like, and she had to slap me with a, a black glove on her hand. And she would forget her line at a certain point. And we did that take about 16 times and I had a welt on the side of my face. Um, but Colleen must have slapped me the most, for sure. <laughs> Um, and she is absolutely the face that is etched in my brain the most of any of my co-actors on that show because she was always right here. <laughs> I love that. I, I mean, a Andy, it's not so bad for you. I mean, you know, Anthony on one side, Colleen on the other. Uh, you know, when you come there so young to learn from these talented, you know, people who've been with the show and, and just who just have that great talent. No, no doubt about it. Better, uh, you know, b no better place to learn, right? For a 12 year old kid, um, 
especially one who had never acted before outside of a TV commercial. Um, so yeah, real pros, guys who had done theater, guys who had done movies, guys who had done a lot of other TVs and ladies, of course. So it was, uh, it was amazing to be able to learn that way. Yeah. And, and I had no pong. idea, I think for the first six, eight months of what to do with my hand, I watched the original episode that I did one, one time and I, my, I see my hands just kind of like no idea what to do with them. So that was, it, it was fun to see the learning curve too. What, what do you think you learned from each of them? Well, the, Anthony, you said, and you can't repeat. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. again, I think most important for my experience on As World Turns was not what I really learned as an actor, but what I learned as a person. And um, each person gives me a different kind of memory. You know, when you think about Scott Holmes and Scotty Bryce, I mean, Scotty Bryce and I spent a lot of time even out in California when we were both finished with the show. Um, so uh, just great life lessons, great um, sense of uh, independence, how to be a professional at 12 years old, show up on time, uh, you know, be respectful of the work, uh, be appreciative of the work. Um, so all important lessons that I was able to take with me into other aspects of my life um, beyond acting. Yeah. Yeah. And how to learn yeah. lines very quickly. Yeah. I mean, we would shoot the hour show or, you know, 49 minutes, however long it was with commercials but we would shoot it a day, in a day. You know, most television hour shows take at least eight days, nine days to shoot, and even right. that's at a fast pace. But to, to put together a show every single day like that, where, you know, all the actors come in in the morning, we would have a quick rehearsal, then we'd all go to hair and makeup, and then be in front of the camera ready to go in, what, two hours time from rehearsal? To shoot. It's really insane. And it's, it's an insane. Often, insane. There yeah. are often edits in the rehearsal hall. Yes. Oh. Yes. Almost but every day. Larry yeah. Brigman. Woo! Whoa! You come yeah. in and yeah. the wrong lines and we change them. Yeah. Yeah. So you have and to relearn the new lines. But um, it yeah, it's it's really mm -hmm. crazy when you think about it. I mean. You know, one one of the best things that ever came out of As the World Turns was is my best friend Vivian Gundaker. Wow, I love Vivian. Vivian is the best. You know, I, I love that you two are still so close. Uh, you know. Oh yeah, she's the awesome. mother to you know my daughter. She, you know, I, I yeah. thought I thought she was the goddaughter. Well, because she introduced us at the Emmys, but I also think you and I, because I was a publicist at Disney before World Turns, and I was there. I think when you did Joy Luck Club, where we may have met. That's right. Which is, That's right. Which is crazy. And she reminded me. Then too. <laughs> yeah. She reminded me though that I had um, asked you to do the daytime Emmys where you presented the award, I think, to World Turn. That's right. They won that year. It was so yeah. exciting. It was really, really special to be able which to is, celebrate that with everyone. That's right. Her mom was there. It was fun. That's she's right. the best. She's, she's the, the best. best. She's yeah, I love Vivian. Vivian. She's fabulous. Everybody loves Vivian. <laughs> Some nice get yeah. love, please. She, she's a young and the restless right now. So, yeah. uh, um, Ming, I have to ask because um, I think it's phenomenal. But what is it like being a Disney legend? Um, <laughs> I mean, that's an incredible. Want to see my halo? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's backlit. <laughs> you know, what it's. Is it's all just such wonderful perks. Um, I mean, I, can, I mean, I'm such a geek and a nerd that to have something like that bestowed upon me, you know, it's, it's sort of like everything that my mom ever wanted for us when she brought us to America is it's just to be able to live this American dream, you know, so it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. And I, I'll throw that around every now and then on set, you know, just for fun. <laughs> I'm a Disney legend. I love it. Yeah. Um, Go get I mean, me coffee. I'm a Disney legend. <laughs> and, and, and Mulan, I mean, you know, doing the animated movie and the new movie that's out. What, what, what do you remember about doing Mulan? Um, you mean the animated Mulan? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just that once again, um, I'd never done voiceover work before and, you know, I knew about the folklore and I thought it was brave of Disney to create something that is so foreign to a lot of people. And we spent three years working on that, 
before it came out. I, I just, I just think it has such an impact on so many people because it is a story about um, finding yourself and believing in who you are. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just lovely to be in something that leaves such a positive impact in so many people's lives. And then the new Mulan, the new Mulan is, you know, it, it was great that they continued the, the story. Yeah. They definitely. Uh, what is it like showing your children Mulan? What was that like for the first time? You know, you would think they would think I'm cool, but no. <laughs> <laughs> how, how old are your just, children? I'm just mom. Well, they're they're older than you. No, I'm not. When you were <laughs> my boyfriend, <laughs> Michaela's uh, 19 now, and Cooper's 14. So I can't even imagine Cooper being on a set working full time with a bunch of adults. It's it's really remarkable how up at up at five on set at six. Yeah. It's it's amazing. You know, that's that's dedication on your part and on your parents' part. I could not ever be a mom to like a kid actor. Oh my gosh. What a nightmare. <laughs> it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a, it's yeah. a, it's a lot of work. You really have yeah. to and Give my parents had five yeah. other kids, uh, five other kids to, yeah. to care for. And uh, and we lived, you know, about an hour from, from the studio. So we'd have to commute every day. But they were the most supportive, absolutely, and uh, wow. there for me every step of the way. But never stage parents. They never oh, whatsoever. No no no, 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 no. I know that gets such a bad label, you know. But, no, just yeah, the dedication just, that a parent has yeah. for a kid actor is remarkable. Yeah, a, a parent – driving sitting on set i mean it's a it's a huge a not in the negative way it's just a huge no. dedication of, of yeah. support i'm too selfish uh, i couldn't do that <laughs> <laughs> no, no doubt about it <laughs> melanie yeah. i i have to ask you know last night i was i'm visiting my sister and my nephews are here and, and their neighbors we were all outside social distancing and telling them about today's show and talking about seinfeld and the shrinkage episode, and pull, we pulled we pulled up the YouTube clip to show the young people who who didn't know it, and it was just we were all cracking up. I mean, you know, you you audition for a part that turns into three, but you become part of that iconic yeah scene that is you know played and remembered. What is so that good. like? So good. Well, I'll tell you, it was a really interesting situation because I had, I, my agents had called me and they said, um, they want to see it Seinfeld. They've been looking for the actress for this two part, this, this, the Schindler's List episode. And I was at Paramount and I was like, it's five. I'm not going over the hill. Like, Andy, you know, <laughs> right? you know, McKnight, it's, like, it's, like for, it's five o'clock. I should have left on Thursday if you wanted me there. Right. And. And I should have left on Thursday. <laughs> the traffic's that, that's anywhere in California to me. <laughs> exactly. And so anyway, I, I finally they pushed me and I went and I, I I read and I met Jerry and everybody and then I left and I got it and I went and I I, I did that episode and then Jerry called me at home and he said, if we write for you, will you stay? Um, wow. And I said, yeah. You know, oh, let me check my schedule. Uh, yeah, of course I will. And uh, and so I did. And then I had gotten uh, Deep Space Nine, the Star Trek series after that. So so I stayed for those episodes and then went on to Deep Space. But um, isn't my friend Rosalind in that one? Rosalind Chow, is she in Deep Space Nine or? I'm not, I'm not interrupt. sure. I'm not sure. There are a lot of people I never knew on that show. I was on oh, the okay. Andy did an episode too, right? I did do an episode of Deep Space Nine. Really? Right? Yes. Before Melanie, I, was, I think. I think it was. Yeah. 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 So Continue, what, Melanie. That was amazing. It really. It was. It was. Uh, it was such a lesson in mastery. Like they were so masterful. Jason Alexander, like masterful. You know, Michael Richard, everybody on that show, even the craft service was the best craft service. I had <laughs> the craft service. Um, and it was, it was really, I had, I had done comedy before, 
but to do comedy with that group of people was just, um, I don't know, you took it into your blood in a way. And when we got that scene, you know, that part when I go, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I laugh at him. That wasn't in the script when I got it. I did that in dress rehearsal. And Larry said, can you do that again? And I was like, of course I can. And so that was, that was that moment. <laughs> and that, crazy. It doesn't that, matter where I go. I'm called shrinkage. Oh, I'm called shrinkage. <laughs> Even oh my in God. my bedroom with my fiance. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that, that is fantastic. I mean, talk about that. It's funny. Um, you know, I, I wanted to surprise you all, and I, I reached out to Scott Holmes too late because I wanted him to say hello to you, Ming. Um, and he was doing some charity work today, and he... Um, <laughs> Um, he sent his love to all three of you. He was so excited. And someone else wanted to say hello. Your so mother. Well, I'm the backup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the backup. <laughs> no backup at all. I wanted both of you. I wanted both of you. Uh, I, I called them both too late. Wow. It was my fault. It was my fault. But Colleen was available and she wanted to say hello. Oh, what a lovely surprise. Hi. Hi, Hi. Hi. Hi Mama. <laughs> Mama. Oh, my God. Um, Andy, holy shit. I love you here. She oh. always has to be in on the on this stuff. Um, you know, uh, were you 14 when you came on the show? I think I was 12. Wow. Yeah, it was before my 13th birthday. You were 12? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, you were a baby, and you were so good and so adorable. And and I'll tell you something funny I've never told you before. Um, <laughs> occasionally, I would drive you home all the way up to Westchester County. Yep. Yeah, because I was I was in Connecticut, and um, my now ex husband thought that I had designs on you. <laughs> oh. No, another cougar. Cougar status. <laughs> 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 Do not make my cougar status. I know. I'm oh, not that's kidding. funny. Oh my God! I've never I've never told anybody that before. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, uh, that crush on you, sweetie yes. pie. Um, yeah. Did you hear him say that, Carl? He said he had a crush on you. Oh, uh, well, she knew uh, that. Well, I knew that <laughs> <laughs> because Andy DeFreitas also had a crush on Marie Masters. How did? How did? Is that right? There were, yep. there Scotty were did. a number of, yep, that is yeah. true. Oh, <laughs> the secrets are out today. Yeah, so oh, that is true. That is so good. Yeah, well, that's where Mel we grew up. Yeah. Melanie I mean, was talking about all the slaps. <laughs> Melanie was talking about all the slaps. And you won oh, in how many oh, you gave her. Honey. Oh, God, <laughs> Melanie, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> You say that like I didn't deserve them. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. You know, um, but you know, the thing is, I don't know if in today's um, television they would allow that. They wouldn't. Do you know? No, I don't they think so. No. <laughs> One mean, of our fans just wrote, ATWT was breeding cougars. Cougars <laughs> 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 starting uh, movement. And I'm Ming, to participate you know, Ming, I, I, Ming, I've heard about, you know, I've, I've seen everything you've done, but, you know, because of Vivian Gundiger, um, I've heard oh. about you. I know. So I I've, love, you know, I know we were just I mentioning her. You. I've followed you all these years Aww. because of Vivian. Oh, yeah. yeah. She loves, she loved the show. She, it was, I mean, I remember when the doors closed on, 
and uh, how devastated she was because that was pretty much her world for real. Right. Uh, and, to, yeah. and today on Y&R, today on Y&R, which I now watch, which I never did back yeah, in the day. I'm so happy for her. <laughs> back in the I never world. did back in the day. But I know a lot of the writers on the show, but there was Vivian's producer credit yes. and, and Mikey Eilbaum's director credit. Uh, I know. So I'm like, you know, I cry. I, I'm like, you know, this is my, they're still my family. And right. I, I still have, uh, I have so many friends on that show that I've known since I was in my early 20s, early, like when I came to New York, um, like before you guys were there. Um, and it's, I'm just so glad that um, we still have the genre around, mm. even though we're not around. Um, I went yesterday and got a major Manny Petty, like <laughs> a, a really expensive one, and I was and I to a place I go all the time, and um, I tried to explain. I've never told them what I've done. I've never said I'm an actor. I've never, I've never told them anything. But yesterday I did. I said, ten years ago today, yeah. my show went off the air after 54 years and I had been there 32. Wow. And, wow. and that's insane. That is I know, insane. I know. I've been there 32 years since I was 28 years old. We'll do the math. And um, it, it, you know, it, it just breaks my heart. So there's been an outpouring all day long. I know you've seen it, Alan. Um, yeah. From fans all day long, talking, tweeting. Yeah. Oh my God. It's Last so it's so heartwarming because um, I actually have a producer friend and um, and somebody who works at Marvel, who I had no idea. You know, I worked with them on set all these years on um, Agents of Shield. They are yeah yeah yeah. Of yep. massive soap fans, and they were so excited about this little no. mini reunion. <laughs> Freak out! I can't wait to call them oh. after this. You surprised us. It, it it and I was like, wait a minute, why didn't you ever tell me? They're like, well, we didn't want to act crazy in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to keep our cred. But oh my god, that, there are so many amazing fans out there. Truly, yeah. well, we, you know, we do, and that's, you guys, you, have, you, all three of you, all three of you have done so much, and have gone so far in different areas, um, in your careers, and I'm so proud of you, oh, so God. proud of you. Thank you know, you. I'm, you know, we, just, we were all attributing it to oh. our experience, our education, really, from from the show. Really, yeah. it's really true. It's really, yeah. you know, it's really, when when you worked with people like Colleen, um, who had so much integrity around their work. I remember in the later days, we had a couple of guest, younger, really young guest actors come in, and and we were running late. And I remember somebody yelled across, like, "Why are we late?" And then they said, "You know, one of the new actors they didn't know their lines," and everybody went, "What?" <laughs> like. You know, not know you're dealing with. You know, like it's it was we were so right. You did not miss a line. You didn't miss your mark. You didn't miss a camera. You just you just didn't. You learned from really devoted you had to. Yeah. actors like right. Colleen. You had to. You know. Well, Colleen. Um, what I. What what? No, no, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Alan. No, I, no, I was just gonna say, Andy, Andy, how'd you get so old? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, You're a grown up. I, 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 living the good, living the good God. life. You know yeah. why, Colleen? Because we sucked his young blood out of him. <laughs> no, we still didn't. No, I, I, I feel I the same age as I did now. then. See, the real truth is, is I'm 103 and Ming Da's 112 in his blood. You were 12 when you started? 12? Were you yeah. really? Yeah. Oh my God. 
Okay, I was thinking about my favorite scenes. And of course, oh, my favorite scene with you, Andy, was on the, you know, the wherever we, the hell we were in Manhattan with the helicopter. Oh, with yeah. Anthony. That was fun. And, and, the, and the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and you were not 12 then. Um, you were probably 15. Um, and you were extraordinary with Thank that you. scene. I mean, to take on that kind of magnitude and that kind of um, adulthood um, with a gun, with your you know, <laughs> fictional father, fictional father, um, it was it was really incredible. And it was one of our standout scenes from way back when. Um, well, well, let's give, because uh, it might have been this year, I don't know, but he won an but, Emmy in 1990 for playing it, Paul. It may have well, been that, that year. Been, that would have been it. It, that it could have been, been and, I, and I recall that. That was exciting because we didn't do much stuff out of the studio. It was uh, very rare no, not back then. that we got to get out of the studio. Except when we went to the Dominican Republic, but that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> what, what do you remember about winning the Emmy, Andy? Um. You know, I, I was kind of the um, Susan Lucci of young kids because I kept getting <laughs> nominated. Stop it was my it. fourth. It was my fourth nomination, and I hadn't won yet. So I, I went in, you know, expecting a really fun party. Me. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, but uh, of course, I mean, how can you? Uh, how, how can you not appreciate that and, and being recognized and? Um, you know, it was it was a big it was a big accomplishment. I think, uh, and, and I think what I remember most of it was uh, how proud my dad was uh, by that accomplishment because oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of commuting up until that point for uh, him and my mom. So I think it was kind of a culmination of oh, he's actually doing okay. <laughs> well, Colleen, I wanted I you to hear this because um, Andy was on um, Shark Tank with his seven-year-old daughter. I know six that. Years about six that. years ago. I watched. Which I, what was yeah. that? Amazing. I missed that episode. Yeah. yeah Tell us crazy. about it, Andy. No, no, no. I love more Shark than Tank. one episode. It was incredible. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what well, what, I what made, happened with that product? It's we're about to launch it. Actually, it's interesting timing for it to come back up. Um, wow. So. She was then four or five years old when she, my daughter, had the concept for a uh, bandage in a bottle, basically a better, the better bandage. Um, so as most dads should, I she said I would like some skin that I could paint on my body that'll feel like skin and will cover up my boo boos. Um, so I promised her that we would make it, uh, thinking it would be, you know, may, I had developed some other technologies and patented some ideas and uh, inventions prior to that. So I thought, oh, maybe we'll give twelve months to this see if we can get somewhere. Um, so we did go on Shark Tank. We succeeded in getting a deal with uh, uh, Mr. Wonderful on the show and have gotten a lot of great publicity. But the truth of the story is, is that that was just sort of the beginning. Um, and that for the last six years, actually, we've been working with uh, chemists and scientists to develop the Better Bandage and is now uh, next year wow. going to be launched uh, with FDA clearance. And um, so it's been a, a long journey. But my wife and I homeschool our kids, so we basically raise them much like I did at 12 um, to start their careers now, to think independently immediately and not to wait to learn from school or college to learn what your passion is. Find your passion now and get after it. Um, so that's kind of what we've done with them. And since I promised her I'd make some uh, skin for her, uh, I couldn't stop until it was done. Wow. Wow. Amazing. What's it going to be wow. called? Or you can't t say right now. Oh no, we could definitely say it's actually going to be launched as Bye Bye Boo Boo. Oh, that's, awesome. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. Bye Bye Boo Boo, the better bandage. Um, so basically, it's a liquid bandage, which is not unique, but it is the first one of its kind that comes in colors. So it'll come in different skin tones. It'll also come in different fun colors, so kids can get creative with uh, first aid and, and kind of become independent and not freak out just because they have a little cut, but learn some independence and creativity. Uh, and also stop 6 billion sticker bandages from going in our landfills every year. So um, that's, that's awesome. the goal. Amazing. Wow. That's, that's amazing. amazing. Oh. So, and I love so it. Mel, your daughter. So Mel, yeah. because I, I was out here earlier 
I know you're down in the New Hope area, correct? Yeah, I'm in New Hope and in Manhattan, both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, and you're teaching. I coach. Am I right? Am I right? You coach. Okay. Yeah. With that incredible body of yours. <laughs> It's hanging in. <laughs> There's the side. Mine's not. <laughs> Melanie, is this is this correct? This website, right? Yep, that's it. Great. Yep, that's awesome. so great. So great. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really fortunate. I love what I do. You know, after after being in the business for so long, and then and then having to make a choice when I had my son and I was at the time I was doing a, a series with my best girlfriend, Nancy McKeon called the division. And I realized I, I, I was in two places at once all the time. And I had been offered a new series and I decided to leave the business to be with my son. And you go like, what do I do now? So I opened my wellness center and I had a wellness center that was a really fabulous success. I'm very proud of it. And my and that was that was a new hope, correct? That was a new hope, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were we were global. We did national and international conventions. I produced those every month. And and then um, you know my coaching practice because I went back to school um, for a, for I went back to school for nutrition and positive psychology. And and then I my coaching practice just really took off. And I sold the business in 2011. And I've just I teach leadership programs. I coach uh, people on a lot of different levels in a lot of different industries. Um, and I feel very, very blessed to be able to do that. And I write, I write for magazines and, and whatnot. So it's great. I'm very, I, like, there's so many iterations to our lives if we let ourselves do anything we can think of, right? And just yeah. allow ourselves to move in that direction. So thanks for saying that, Colleen. That means a lot to me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And Ming, you well, haven't been busy at all. No. <laughs> I still consider myself kind of lazy, though. It's it's just <laughs> not. <laughs> you know how I like think... you, just, you can never make yourself think that you've done enough. So, like I'm like, oh yes, I need to write now. Okay, I need when to when like. You're gonna, say, you're gonna say, I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> yes. Seriously, I, I Ming. Do like, I do like a nap. <laughs> Ming, you have not stopped since the day you no. walked out of that studio. You have, you have not worked. It's non -stop. been, a, a, you know, a blessing beyond belief. Yeah, and, really and I have an amazing team over the years. You know that um, that uh, I whip them all the time to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's just, it's, it? so, because it's not easy for a woman, and then of course now a woman of my age and being, you know, a minority. Your age? Your age? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know. But uh, yeah, it's you know, it's it's just, it's really great. It, you know, I love this business and I love this because it, this is what it's about. Even though I have not, you know, spoken to these guys for, I, I, I just feel like we're good friends that just pick up where we left off. Yeah, fun. And, yeah. You true. know, it, yeah. because you, you have that bond when you work so closely with people yeah. day in and day out and, you know, you share ideas and stories and creativity and, and, and it's just, it, it does feel like you pick up where you just left off. It really yeah. does. Yeah. I mean, I have to ask what, I mean, especially too, I think, you know, for a woman, I mean, a strong woman like yourself, um, to be part of the Marvel universe and then, you know, Mar uh, playing Melinda May and then your role on the Mandalorian, which was my husband and I had just finished it not too long ago. And I didn't know you were in it ahead of time. So I was like, jumping up and down when I saw you up on screen and yeah. kicking some kicking some butt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, want to show I want to show like back on like as the world turns where we just sit around and eat a meal and, <laughs> and sit in the living room because <laughs> <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> it's so <laughs> much <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. um, you know, for me, because like I said, I was such a, a geek to, to be 
part of both these worlds, whether, whether it was Marvel and then of course Star Wars. I mean, the force was my religion other than Buddhism. Um, I, you know, it's, it's a dream. It's fantastic. I was on Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? It doesn't get cooler than that. It doesn't right? get cooler than that. I, I mean, just going to, just going to Disney World or Disneyland and going on the Millennium Falcon, I was like ten years old again. I know. Wasn't it? Oh. I mean, if you guys haven't been there yet. It's oh, it's amazing. We had, taken, we had taken my husband's nephew a year ago. Thank God, a year ago he had turned fifteen and he loved Star Wars, and we took him to the Millennium Falcon. It was, it was amazing. Um, but talking, I mean, talking about you just said like you were a geek and you were in that world. Melanie, um, I, I didn't know you were a big fan of World Turns before you arrived. Your mom watched World Turns. My mother's favorite show was World Turns. She used to like rock me to the show when I was a baby. And, you know, people would say, did you always want to be an actress? And I would say, no, I just always wanted to live in Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll tell you, like, manifestation works, right? Like, I never thought about being an actress, but I always thought about living in Oakdale because that was <laughs> <laughs> that makes perfect sense. So when Paul, when Paul said to me that day, be a little nervous, I was like, why would I be nervous? These are my family. <laughs> oh wow! I did. Oh my god! When you absolutely. I, I don't know if you remember that. I wasn't nervous at all. I just thought you were all part of my life. Like it was never, I like walked through my TV screen into the world. But honey, you walked in with that body, that body and every guy <laughs> died. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Andy didn't notice at all. Andy <laughs> didn't notice. And that boy, you know, they would put me in negligees and bikinis and cat suits and whenever they could, right? Andy, yes, did you tell the writers to give you that storyline then? <laughs> <laughs> to, I, to lose your I, virginity I, to Melanie? <laughs> I begged. I, it was part of my contract. <laughs> That is so funny. Well, and then Ming, it was you and Scotty DeFreitas and Andy, and then it was Michael Loudon, right? Oh, As yeah. a trio. Rest his soul. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I think I lost my virginity yeah. to Duke. To, yeah, to, to Duke? Husband. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. A, a lot of virginity all over Oakdale. <laughs> a, a lot of virginity lost in Oakdale. Yes. Yes. They were, they were breeding cougars. Not me. Uh, Melanie. <laughs> 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 Melanie, one of our fans, um, Matt, says that your sister Patricia was uh, his professor. <gasps> oh, she's, <laughs> she's a tough professor, my sister. What does she, she teach? Uh, literature. She, um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I really love my sister Trish. She, um, she had a few strokes uh, about a year and a half ago, and oh, she, I'm sorry. Uh, she's not touching any here. But she would teach literature. She was a literature teacher and a brilliant one. And people would come up to me and say, "I, I had your sister." <laughs> she was a professor. <laughs> um, but then in the summer, sometimes she would actually teach Shakespeare. So, oh wow! Yeah, she loved. She lo and she just had a children's book published. So uh, it's called Marguerite, and um, she's a beautiful soul and really, a really smart. She told me today, she's like, just don't make any grammatical mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Before coming on here? <laughs> like, when properly, properly, don't make any mistakes. Always a teacher. Always a teacher. Always a teacher. I love you, Trish. Thank you for my training. Um, That's so funny. And, and Ming, your daughter was following in your footsteps uh, in voiceover. Do, you, do either of your kids want to act? Um, Michaela goes back and forth about it, uh, but you know, for a while there, when she wanted to do it, we thought just doing voiceover was good because, like I said, I didn't want to be a <laughs> parent, <laughs> child actor. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, you know, I think she's she's still figuring it out, but she really loves fashion and she loves writing. So right now she's in college for journalism and fashion. And, uh, you know, we'll see where oh, that goes. Wow. Because I told her she can always pick up acting at any age, at any time. 
if the passion strikes her, you know, that's the wonderful thing about um, this profession is that if it's the right time for you, then then you can pursue it. You know, there isn't like a deadline for it. Um, so I just told her to pursue her, her passions, you know? Yeah. And then my son, no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> I, did raise, I did raise a nerd, so I'm very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Andy, how do you pronounce your daughter's name? Kiowa. It's Kiowa. Like Iowa with a K. Yeah, Kiowa. It's Pretty. beautiful. It's a Native American uh, uh, name. It's a Native American tribe, actually. Beautiful. And it, she's uh, a teenager, right? Just turned 13, yeah. Wow. Yeah, she... very interesting. How did, you, how, did that, how did that name come about, Andy? Um, well, my wife and I like uh, follow a lot of uh, Native American um, practices, and we had a Native American uh, wedding ceremony, um, uh, blessed by uh, uh, Native American chief, and just some of the traditions we like to kind of follow and, and um, respect. So um, that's how her name came about. Okay. And you didn't wow. invite me. <laughs> how old are your kids? Uh, 19 and uh, 14. So you're wow. all, it's almost the same age as my own. It's so my insane to me. Yeah. yeah. And, and your son's about to get a job with Pepsi, right, Melanie? PepsiCo. He just got a full-time job with PepsiCo. He's graduating from uh, business school in May. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no more of that, Ellen. Um, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Gideon, he's going to graduate in May, and then he starts at PepsiCo in July, I think. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, That's thanks. Awesome. He's wow. A really smart kid. Really smart kid. And gorgeous. Just a gorgeous kid, too. And he's well, 19, 20? 21. Okay. Are you in Manhattan? I'm in Manhattan and New Hope both. I have. Is he in Manhattan? Maybe no, we can say Michaela. He's in college at Penn State. Ah, what did you say? He's trying to connect, he's trying to connect him in New York. Oh, have a good time. Let's, well, he'll be yeah. at Maine now. I have to get to do because he'll be in Manhattan uh, next month. So. Matchmaker. Who knows? I'll get your number. If you want an executive in PepsiCo? <laughs> <laughs> is, is she in New York right now, Ming? Yes. Yes. Oh wow! Is that hard for you? Wow. Um, it is. I mean, the only great thing about you know um, having this downtime, and I mean, under very horrible circumstances, you know, with COVID, but. It was to. It was really lovely to have her home, and I wasn't working, you know, for the last six months. Um, it because normally I'm I'm not home a lot, so it it was really fantastic to, you know, have her, and we were just hanging out. So, but she's back in Manhattan now. Yes, it's hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, before I let you all go, because you know, like Colleen said, and I mentioned earlier, ten years ago yesterday. You know, the, the fans who are tuning in today to see all of your beautiful faces. I mean, you know, especially, you, you know, Colleen was there at the end, the three of you, you know, it's the late night, early 90s, late 80s. You know, there's a connection that, you know, these fans have to you because like we keep talking about that one word family. Yeah. Do you have memories of, you know, the stories you told and connections to fans or like, you know, a letter you got because of, you know, anybody, you know, well, I mean, you know, Andy. I, you I still get so much fan. I, I'm not on Facebook much anymore. I used to be on a lot, but I, I'm not there much anymore. Um, but I still get so much love from the fans either Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. They're all still out there. And um, I've had a lot of personal tragedy in the last few years. And I've had incredible support from the fans. And that would not have happened without the show. And um, even though Barbara was the evil bitch mother from hell, <laughs> she played it so well. <laughs> oh, she did. And married nine times on the show. Um, 
<laughs> you know, we were very lucky to be where we were when we were there because yeah. it no longer exists. Yeah, it's true. Not yeah. on the East Coast. I mean, um, Y&R is there, B&B is there, Days of Our Lives, General Hospital. Um, but they're all on the West Coast. And, you know, people keep saying to me, why don't you go out there? I went, no, I have no, I have no interest in going to the West Coast <laughs> at all. You know, give me a theater job, give me a play, give me, you know, but not out there. And I'm sorry. Andy, and um, no, Colleen, Andy it, is where you we are. We were very, very, pardon? Yes, we sure were. In, yeah, Andy's he's in Florida with you. You're in the Florida. He's in Florida. He's in Florida with you. Yeah. 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 I'm in a little where bit are a minute. You? Up, up I'm just going to get off. Alan, what are you? When we get off, okay. When we get off, I'll tell you. But but um, I one of our fans, one of our fans reminded me to tell and um melanie and andy just so you know for the record paul and emily ended up together at the end of the show uh, well oh, I know. that's right oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know andy you and i might have ended up together for one of her <laughs> <laughs> just if you could have just handled a few more slaps in the face <laughs> like, she's not gonna remind me. <laughs> I just want to say we talked about this backstage before that you know the the fan groups you know from daytime or sci-fi or Seinfeld even you know we and I know you hear people say this all the time and I really mean this like we wouldn't get to do what's in our hearts and tell the stories that are in our hearts if it wasn't for them. And it starts with the fans and and really honoring, you know, art is two-sided. It's what you bring to it, but it's also the level of expectation on the other side. And I, I have to thank the fans in all of my experiences in this industry for keeping the expectations high, which made my work better. Uh, and, and they're extraordinary. I've spent ma many, many, many hours with fans and they're just, they're just, Thank you. Like, there's no other words than thank you. And uh, you blessed us. You're our blessing, truly. Yeah, I mean, from you, Ming, too. I mean, like, so fans, and then you go to sci-fi, you know, for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, you know, The Mandalorian. I mean, those fans, like you said, you're a, you're a geek. You're, you know, it, it's got to be um, kind of rewarding for you as well. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the great perks of this job is making those connections with people. And uh, I, I mean, I remember with As the World Turns, I was on the subway and this total yeah. stranger, this woman came up and gave me a big hug. <laughs> and she was so excited that she was meeting one of her Oakdale, you know, peeps. And, and I think it's because we're in their living room every single day. Yeah. yeah. And it, it just, it does create sort of this family bond that no other show really can, except, you know, maybe now with streaming, uh, you can watch things, but it, you know, it's like every single day for years and years. I mean, Colleen, you know, 34, how, how long was Helen Wagner on? Isn't she in like the Guinness Book of World Records? Well, yeah. Helen, yeah. Was, Helen was there from day one yeah. and, until, yeah. until she died. And so she was there from 1956. We were on the air for 54 years, and she died the last year that we were on the air. Mm. Yeah. Shortly, shortly before the show ended. Yeah. yeah. There's no TV and there's no fan base, and there's nothing like daytime. They're just, yeah. and there never will be again. No. Yeah. No. And yeah. it's in, and it's interesting because, you know, some people appear on a soap and then you know they grow up and you know your your appearance changes. But all of you four look exactly the same, really. Huh. You know. Oh, and you're I, I mean, you are. But you, but you, come on. I mean, if I walked down, you know, if Andy, I was in a supermarket or saw you, I would, you know, know immediately, you know, that it was you. And Ming and Melanie and Colleen, it, it, you know, some people just change a hair color. You just you grow, you know, your 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 body changes, but 
you look exactly the same. Well, they fed us formaldehyde every morning, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> so. Andy, what do you remember? I mean, being so young and meeting fans. Well, no doubt about it that the, the memory of soap fans is very strong. I mean, for 20 years more, as still today after the show, I still get recognized from As the World Turns. How people, you know, still have that memory, I, I have no idea. Um, but I, I think, you know, one of my kind of favorite stories uh, that I remember was the actually the time I did win the Emmy Award. It's kind of driven me since this day to be more entrepreneurial and more business minded. Um, and not just rely on acting um, as a profession, even though get most out of it as I could, um, was that when I won the award, I came off stage and the first person to greet me there was a Procter & Gamble executive who uh, congratulated me and then thanked me uh, for putting, um, for, for giving them something to put on between their commercials, is how she phrased it. So she said, congratulations, and thank you for giving us something to put on between our commercials. Um, and I kind of, that just stuck with me for a really long time about what it was to be an actor and in that position and how to kind of motivate beyond those opportunities. Yeah. That is wild. I wish I knew who that was. <laughs> I wish I knew who that was too. Well, right, that's why they call it soap operas, isn't it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It was exactly. a female. It was a female, and I don't remember her name, but uh, I recall it vividly. She wow. wasn't there when I uh, came into the PR department. There, were, there were, was not a female for P&G, sort of, um, in that role, but uh, Got it. that's funny. Okay. That's Thank funny. you. Yeah. yeah, you will, Colleen. Text me later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Colleen, do you remember the Christmas boxes we used to get with detergents and... Uh, <laughs> Oh, we did, we did, but then smaller, we stopped it. Smaller, smaller. I, I might have gotten it my first, I started in 97 and, and they might have done it for the first few years and then they stopped it. Those were fun boxes. <laughs> they were wonderful. You're, you're, you're tied, you're paper, you're tied. Now you're I get them for my son from PepsiCo filled with Lay's potato chips. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> That's funny. Well, you four, this has been a delight. I can't thank you enough for doing this. It, it timed out well that it was the day, you know, September 18th when the show had just ended yesterday. I know in your faces for all these fans who miss, you know, their Oakdale family, I'm sure you, you, you brightened everybody's day and uh, you certainly brightened mine. So let's, I'm going to sign off. We'll say, we'll say goodbye. Super and then we can talk, we can talk backstage for a minute. Okay. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.